session which we are talking about that is in our development and the development uh, integrating the competencies, uh, how the competencies that can be uh, developed uh, for into the talent process is there. Uh, if we know there is the how integration is to be done in the talent process, then the organizations will be able to not only the generate and uh, develop, but also will be able to retain and uh, uh, create the human capital. Now, for this purpose, we will be talking about the integrating competencies into the talent process, potential forecast, case study, motivation and retention and examples of the talent analytics we will take. Now, integrating competencies into the talent process. In the talent process, the first and foremost is the inclusion and culture that is the how you are able to include the your talented employees and build that particular culture is there. So, reinforces the critically of the cultural fluency. Every organization is having its own culture. Hmm? For example, Professor Ode Parikh sir has mentioned in the book of the organizational behavior uh, that is the, uh, the there is an octopus, openness, confrontation, trust, authenticity, authenticity proactiveness. Uh, 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 and uh, uh, experimentation. So, therefore, in that case, the, that particular what type of every organization will have some organizations will have the openness culture, some organizations will have the trust, some organizations will be having the openness, trust, uh, and even though there is a confrontation, confrontation, but there is a team building and there, there is a trust is also there. So, uh, it, it, it is very, very important that is the whether organization is proactive or not. Uh, and in uh, e, e, if uh, that is they are going for the experimentation that is a wonderful. So, reinforces the critically of the cul cultural fluency in the benefits of integrating the competencies of the talent uh, into talent process. Second one is if, the, if you include the competencies guides inclusive decision making and actions are there. This is uh, uh, a, a point to be focused is decision making process. Now, when we are differentiating between the talent and normal uh, human resource, then definitely the talented people are supposed to take a such a decision which will be justifying the all, all the queries and not only justifying the all the queries, but they will also support for the vision for the future. So, guides that is the inclusive decision making and the actions are taken accordingly whatever the decisions are taken. Assesses gaps in inclusive capabilities and behaviors are there. So, therefore, in that case that is a what type of the capabilities uh, you are developing um, amongst the employees. Uh, now, when we are talking about the analytical skills right nowadays there are two uh, uh, positions they are becoming very, very important. One is the business development and other is the analyst. Right. And therefore, if we are assessing, we are able, capable to assess the gaps in inclusive capabilities that is the what are the uh, how to in include the employees. It is a holistic leadership, it is the inclusive of the all the employees and then with their strengths and weaknesses. As a result, you are able to cover their behaviors also. So, so, to cover their behaviors it is uh, and uh, involved into the organizational process it is very necessary that is you are having uh, in your talent process the inclusive strategy, including the talents with their all strengths and weaknesses and matching that particular talent with the culture. So, do you are developing their particular culture. Second one is workforce planning and talent analytics is important. So, how you are making the uh, workforce planning? Now, you see nowadays that is a dashboard, dashboard is very commonly used and when you are using the dashboard very commonly, so that you are making the workforce planning, you are making the uh, uh, plan your workforce accordingly. So, therefore, in the time of the ups and downs of the business, uh, it is very much important that how you are planning your workforce. It will also depend on the technology acquisition. So, it identifies uh, world world planning and talent analytics uh, uh, that identifies the supply and demand. That is what will be the uh, demand of the talented people and what will be the supply will be there. 
uh, and from where you are getting those employees are there, from where what is your source of supply to the your employees. Diagnosis employees development needs, hmm? what is their need of the development, what they want to develop like, like you have to understand in the pyramid, pyramid uh, if there will be certain employees or most of the employees they are looking for their survival. Then certain employees they will be looking for their growth opportunities, promotions. There will be certain employees those who will be looking for the excellent level or the very high level of, of in the organization and uh, very high positions in the organizations. So, therefore, in that case you have to identify the development needs because if you want to fulfill the top level needs then you, you have to develop your manpower talent. People are talented but do they know that job? May, they may not know that particular job and therefore you have to develop them. So, therefore, that development needs are to be there. In forms of skill gaps in critical talent segments. Now, uh, many times you will find a particular type of the employees are required like a simple example is a particular machine operator, boiler operator right. This type of the their, their uh, the, the skilled uh, people are required or in the analytics right and therefore, if you have that we will take further uh, in further sessions the talent analytics. So, therefore, if you are able to develop that talent uh, analysis uh, analytical skills gap and then you want to develop that particular uh, 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 development of the uh, your people. Uh, talented people, then definitely with the help of the talent analytics, you can identify the areas and then you can develop your manpower. We can also is a very is a important key term is there that is the key job roles. So, uh, like for example, the manufacturing industries and service industries. In the manufacturing industries, and that production department that is at the shop floor right that is becoming very important. In the service industries example is uh, like the hotel and in the hotel industry the chef that is a production department and then uh, in that production department it becomes very very important. So, we have to identify the skill gaps are there, what skill gaps are there? We might be having the talented chef. But the demand may be that is that there is a particular type of the dish and uh, maybe the continental dish and then one has to prepare for the continental dish he, uh, earlier he may not be. So, that skill gaps are to be identified and then we have to develop the manpower the talented manpower accordingly. Then in integrating the competencies uh, uh, what is important is talent acquisition. We will be identify the skill gaps in talent when we will have the talented employees. So, how to have the talented employees? Thus, the talent, the talent acquisition provides for the consistency during the interviewing. It is very important. When you are going through the selection process of the employees, then it becomes very important that what is your interview style. And your in interview style is having the job knowledge, HR skills, analytical skills, conceptual skills, designing skills and that you are testing. If you are testing those are all, all these type of the skills different managerial skills and then you find that certain skills are, are acquired in excellent way, but certain skills are required to be developed and therefore, at the time of talent acquisition one should be clear cut map should be there that is these are the manpower. Uh, numbers and then these are the skill sets which they are having and these are the skill sets gaps are there which is required to develop. However, the manpower which have been identified they are highly talented, but may not be knowing a particular skill. So, we have to provide them training for that purpose. So, uh, provide the consistency during the interview then guides the candidates assessment. So, it, it becomes uh, very important that is the what is the candidates assessment. If we are able to develop that um, candidates assessment properly, we will be able to identify the talent skills gap. Enables assessment of candidates for the culture fit. This is we this we, we keep on talking about this issue 
in the talent management it is very very important you may acquire a very highly talented person but will that person will be able to fit in your culture i always give that example like a daughter in law I, I, she is most beautiful she is well educated but whether she will be able to accommodate the family's culture or not otherwise she will not she will the wife of the husband but will never be a daughter in law in the family so therefore that role will be missing so therefore in that case it is very important that is the enables assessment of candidates for cultural fit if culture fit is there everything will be done learning and leadership development is there and it is a diagnosis employees leader development needs that is the how they are able to develop that uh, leader development needs are there and uh, informs content for the uh, core leader development programs are there uh, the core competencies for which the talent uh, you identified the talent gap there there are critical issues and those critical issues that they will be privilege alignment for the development with the business goals performance management in the performance management establishes the performance expectations that is what is expected from the performance of the employees and whether they are able to fulfill or not if they are not able to fulfill the expectations of the performance then in that case there will be lot of gap and those gaps are to be fulfilled as is as the skill gaps so there are different job skills are there Yes, and that they will be the skilled, the semi-skilled are there, and if the skilled are there, then particular job which requires a particular next level of knowledge, because when you are recruited, so definitely in that case they are having that particular uh, skill. But now when you are looking for the potential appraisal, from the performance appraisal to the potential appraisal, from the current state to the future state, then definitely assess the skill gaps. if you are able to assess the skill gaps then you will be successful provides the how to for achieving for per, uh, for the performance goals and this is very important people are talented people want willing also but they do not have the direction and if you provide them the direction of their performance management that that will be a wonderful road map I would like to share my example. That is when I joined the IIT Roorkee in 17 years back, and that time, in the beginning of only, it was told to me that is, please go through the performance our a performance appraisal form. Within uh, uh, first few days of my joining, it was told. However, the performance appraisal form that time was supposed to be submitted after one year. But my leaders were so visionary that they advised me that is, the read now today only. and then you will come to know that what you have to do in one year and so that at the time of the end of the year you will not feel that is oh you were not aware for example a project so that time you can't say that i was not knowing the project so phd guidance that time i should not said end of the year that i could not do these things a b c d i could not do no that's why i should know the abcd in the advance only so that when at the with the period of time i develop the abcd for achieving the performance goals and then career and succession management is there so assesses the readiness for the next roles hmm. so career advancement because the when we are talking about the competencies integrating into the talent process their uh, readiness for next role that is a promotional role that they should be very clear diagnosis development needs that is the they are able to diagnose what are the development needs are there in the career and successful management then the diagnose the development needs uh, and illustrate career progression opportunities always talent is looking for the career progression if they are going by this particular process then definitely they will be able to make the competencies into the talent management process they will be able to integrate so uh, here uh, in there are certain illustrations that is what type of the list of the 10 representative core competencies and and their definitions that is uh, what type of their their core competencies are there first we will take the action orientation the action orientation targets and achieves the results hmm? so uh, you see uh, nothing can be compensated as compared to the job skills one has to be very strong in his job 
and therefore that is the targets and achieve the results. So, whatever the target is there and the target has to be achieved by that particular uh, employee who is a uh, classified as a talented employee. Overcomes obstacles, whatever the problems are coming, they are overcoming obstacles. Accepts responsibility, more and more responsibilities are accepted. Organizations have to learn, leader has to get work done, but how he alone he cannot do that work. So, what he does? He gives the responsibility to different persons unbiasedly and therefore, they are, they are the accepts the responsibility. Establishes standards and, and responsibility. So, they will be benchmarking practices, that is what one has to do. So, they, they will be the, these responsibilities will be defined. Then creates a result oriented environment, ultimately nothing will become uh, justified if the results are not there. To get the results, it becomes very important, that is the you are having uh, that result oriented environment. So, what have has been asked to you to deliver? You have delivered. What has been asked you to achieve? You have achieved that and therefore, result oriented environment that will that, that will make the uh, uh, tenth, not, uh, in the top 10 uh, competencies and follows through an action. So, actions are to be taken. Second list of the competency is there that is about the communication. Communicates well both really and in writing and then therefore, in that case it is becoming important that is one is able to write the both orally and writing communication, verbal and uh, written communication. Effectually conveys and shares information and ideas with others. What managers are required to do? That they are supposed to share that particular information uh, with the others effectually. Uh, so, HR policies, HR rules, new rules are uh, done and uh, new changes are made. So, that, that has to be communicated very effectively and uh, share the information with others. Listens carefully and understands various viewpoints, the leader, the talented person, they must be at the leader's position. So, what is required that is they should listen and understand others very carefully, that is what they are saying. Presents ideas clearly, the presentations they are having the proper uh, procedure and uh, consistently and understands relevant details in the presented information. So, whatever the details are there in the presented information, those all detail present uh, uh, are to be uh, known for by the each stakeholder. So, the, that way the communication will be done, whether it is verbally or it is in return or it is a symbolic. So, therefore, that particular uh, presentation of the information is necessary. Creativity or innovation and that generates the novel ideas uh, all, uh, as I mentioned the importance of the talent is the competency of talent is that is the generation of the novel ideas. The new product development, solutions to the problems. So, nobody has thought of the solution and you think of that particular solution, that is a novel idea and therefore, that novel ideas and develops are improves the existing and new systems. Uh, so, you are improving the new system, the existing system you are improving and making it totally new system. When you are making the new system, the people are very happy. That challenges the status quo, takes risk and encourage innovations. So, always whenever you are going for the new task that will challenge to these uh, your status and uh, definitely it takes risk, with risk will be involved and uh, uh, there, but ultimately what will happen? The innovations will be there. So, that creativity and innovation is the competency which is becoming very, very important. And nowadays much more emphasis are based, uh, is given to the critical and innovation strategy. Critical judgment possesses the ability to define uh, issues and focus on achieving workable solutions. So, therefore, the, the, the employees will be able to uh, possess the ability to, to define the issues and uh, issues. What are the issues are there in the organizations? If the issues are not, uh, uh, they are not becoming the uh, proper, then definitely they will uh, uh, are not addressed properly, uh, then organization will not grow. 
for the growth of the organization it becomes very important that there are certain issues and what you want to achieve. Many times organizations themselves are not clear what they want to achieve. So, then that decision making process strategic decision making will be totally complex because they themselves are not clear what they want to achieve and what solutions they are looking for workable solutions consistently does the right thing by performing with the reliability and if the you, you are able to develop that particular reliability then you are done. Then customer orientation listens to customers builds customer confidence. So, therefore, that is a relationship relationship with the customer then, then uh, that will be built only when, when you are listening to them and developing a confidence. It increases the customer satisfaction and nowadays we are talking about the customer delightment. So, customers are delighted. So, that, that is the concept and when we are talking about customer delighted and responsible to the customer needs that that is very important. Emotional intelligence possesses the capability for the recognizing, uh, regulating and constructively ha handling the one's own emotions and the emotions of others. We have talked about the emotional intelligence is there. Emotional intelligence is about the self awareness, self regulation, empathy, motivation and socialization. So, these are the five dimensions of the emotional intelligence is concerned. So, in the emotional intelligence these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 dimensions that will create the, the uh, employee that is strongly emotionally intelligent. To create this emotionally intelligent uh, it is uh, whether you are knowing to recognizing regulating this awareness and constructively handling one's own emotions with the empathy motivation and socialization that is the handling the one's own emotions and emotions of others that is a socialization process. If you are able to do that then definitely in that case you are very strong emotional worker or emotional labor. So, emotional intelligence that is the possessing the capability uh, that, that has to be very strong in development of the talent process in the organization. Leadership qualities, leadership that is the motivates, empowers and inspires. We will talk the leadership uh, in the detail later on also that is the motivates, empowers and inspires collaborative with and encourage uh, the others. So, therefore, are you feeling motivated? Are you empower or you, you are not feeling that inspired by yourself? If you are inspired that is the, then you are inspiring the others also. The leadership develops a culture in which the employees feel ownership in what they do and continually improve the business uh, in business. So, therefore, ownership as I mentioned empowerment and ownership organizational citizenship behavior and psychological ownership. So, psychological ownership is developed by the leaders that is yes you are the king of the house and you have to take the decisions. Uh, so, uh, builds consensus when appropriate focuses team members on common goals and therefore, when they are at the appropriate places then there will be a team, uh, team building and then accordingly they will find the common goals are there to achieve. Next one is that is a teamwork is there. So, therefore, if we are talking about the teamwork everybody is working together, together everyone achieves more, hmm? team means what? Together everyone achieve and more. So, T, T E A M team is there 
together everyone achieves more and here you will find knows when and how to attract develop reward and utilize so team 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 performance eh? unless until you do not reward the team performance they will not be able to gain and utilize teams to optimize the results now aids to build the trust inspire enthusiasm encourage others hmm? so therefore the team members what they are doing they are encouraged and they are inspired so definitely they will like to do more and help resolve conflicts and develop consensus naturally in the team team formation there is a uh, storming for, forming uh, forming storming performing right and then adjourning is there so when you are talking about the first is the forming so team is formed then there will be the naturally they are coming from the different personalities there will be storming then norms are created and then performance are then and then the adjourning is there so that teamwork is becoming the inspire the enthusiasm encourage others and help the resolve conflicts right conflicts is the time of developing the norms and develop the consensus in creating high performance teams so there will be no need of the high, um, the uh, employees to feel demotivated and there will be the high performance teams technical and functional expertise is there so there is demonstrate the strong technical and functional proficiencies hmm, that always i talk about that is the first and foremost requirement is the job skills knowledge of job skills there is a technical skills technical skills human skills conceptual skills analytical skills designing skills so therefore the technical skills is the number one so demonstrate the strong technical functional proficiencies and knowledge in the areas of the expertise uh, shows knowledge of the company business and pro proficiency in the strategic and financial processes including profit and loss therefore they in that case they can be profit and loss planning processes and their importance for the company is there so there what is the role of there of these teams that that has to be seen and accordingly the ultimately purpose is that is the prof, profit and loss planning and their bring the company into the profit so that will be the objectives now second one is the performance appraisals are there so once we know that is a 10 competencies are there there will be the measurement of actual results and therefore employees they will be critical to job and organizational success will be there there is a small number of ways organizations measure employees performance d growth describes a cogent view of performance appraisal this model envisions performance appraisal consisting of organizational competencies hmm? so therefore organizational competencies are there whether the organization now you see organization life cycle organization life cycle it goes by like this embryo growth maturity and decline it goes like this so therefore organizational comp competencies will be depending upon the the stage stage of the life cycle of the organization and uh, then if uh, that, that is uh, in the case it is going to be the beneficial for all the uh, stakeholders of the organization then the job family competencies will be uh, uh, taken into consideration and uh, with the job competencies uh, there will be the job responsibilities right once what you have once is what the power you have you are empowered but with the, those decisions uh, empowerments wh what you can do and what you cannot do their job responsibilities goals and major projects are there which you have to uh, we have to achieve so martin wolf classifies the performance appraisal systems as being based on the one or more of the following that is a trade based that certain trades drive the performance measures personal characteristics of the position incumbent so therefore it can be like this that is the person is having the personal trait the personality traits are the extrovert introvert thinking feeling perceiving and judging mbti so therefore there, there can be different personalities and then they, they will decide on the basis of the personality that person can do job or he cannot do the job so many times you will find that is that is in the defense service it is a personality trait based uh, uh, test that is becoming more important behavior based 
assume that certain behaviors drive performance that is there will be the certain behavioral aspects and on basis of those behavioral aspects and the, there will be certain the drive performance will be there and the persons will decide about the behavior. Then, then there can be the knowledge or skill based is there that certain knowledge in skills drive performance measures what the position incumbent knows or applies. So, talented people and uh, they will be given a certain responsibilities on the basis of their what exactly knowledge and skills they are having. Certain employees they are having very high strong level of knowledge and skills and then they will be promoted. Results based are there achievement of the objective equals performance measures what the position incumbent achieves and therefore, that will be the criteria. So, finally, I will like to take a case study uh, that is a step up learning school is an educational center that employs nearly 500 employees to carry out his various activities in four branches in Mumbai. Mr. Oberai is the HR manager who looks after the HR functions like recruitment and selection, training and development and performance appraisal. Mr. Mukherjee, the senior manager carries out performance appraisal every six months. The organization follows only the traditional methods of performance appraisal that is of the confidential reports. Mr. Mukherjee who is arrogant and sometimes rude in his dealing with the employees keeps all the reports confidential. The employees are very unhappy about the treatment they receive at his uh, uh, hands. They fear to complain that they will feel that CR will be spoiled. So, they approach the HR manager for help. If you are the HR manager, how will you handle the situation? The uh, uh, I will not give the direct answer, the answer is the into the competencies. So, in the 10 competencies if you will refer, you will find the answer for this particular question is there. Uh, the second part of the perf after performance appraisal is the potential forecast is there. How many levels an employee can progress within an organization based on his or her past or current performance appraisals. So, the training and development needs career preferences and actual and projected competency levels that represents the realistic future job opportunities. And on basis of this we will decide about that is the how the talent competencies are to be developed on the basis of their performance appraisal, on basis of the, their potential appraisals by identifying those skills, the competencies skills, competencies mapping and then we will understand how to analyze the talent. So, this is all about uh, this session and thank you.